Hey folks, a little something special for you today. I'm sitting down with two folks that are gonna talk to us about the latest Smug Mug film release. This is Twitter. Hey, welcome back to This Week in Photo. I'm your host, Frederick Van Johnson. Joining me today on the show are two folks that uh, that kind of did the Wonder Twin Powers thing, where you take two extremely t- creative people and put them in a beautiful, quote, foreign land and see what they come up with. And the result is a stunning Smug Mug film. This film was released today, if you're, reading, if you're watching this as it was released. And those two people are Anton and Karen. And you guys, you know, I looked at the film and I watched the film three times today. <laughs> so Karen sent it to me last night. I was too groggy to watch it. I watched it this morning with fresh coffee, caffeinated eyes. And wow. So the phone, the film, and I'm not exaggerating. When people see the film, it, it is it looks like a giant production company with trailers and PAs and, you know, millions of dollars went to a foreign location and kicked off this thing and created this thing after many, many years of production. Turns out <laughs> basically the entire crew I have on this interview right now to, that created that. So before we dive into that, Karen, so welcome to both of you. Thank you guys for coming on. Um, Thank you, Frederick. Appreciate you're welcome. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome. Karen, I, w- I want to start with you. So you, you, I, you and I go way back. We've, we've known each other for quite a while. I want to, I want to talk about the, the impetus of this film, the Genesis, like where, where did it come from? Was it your idea or was it Smug Mug's idea? How did, how did it come up? Well, first of all, I have admired Anton's work for years and I've loved it. And, you know, you secretly wish, Oh my God, I'd love to do something like that. But then what kind of arrogance says, Hey, you should make a film about me. Right. So I never said anything. I just admired from, from afar and drooled a little at every new release. And then out of the blue, when was it August? Yeah, Yeah, I think so. I got, I got a request. Hey, you want to make a smug mug film? And I'm like, what? (laughs) (laughs) I was kind of speechless. My jaw dropped. I drooled a little more. And I said, of course, yes. And, um, it turned out that it was it was a request that came from Smug Mug and Fujifilm because they were partnering for the first time um, on Smug Mug Films, and they each had separately chosen me to be their first subject. There'll be there will be many more, but I'm the first. So I had to soak that in for a while, and away we went. That's fantastic. So let's let's talk about that just a little bit, um, and then Anton, I want to I want to switch over to you and 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 talk about sort of the nuts and bolts of the the film itself. But Karen, so so I've known you since before you were a Fuji shooter. When you were, you know, I like to say like the 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 peanuts character from Charlie Brown with the backpack full of gear, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you switched, and now you're lightweight and a ninja with the car- with the camera. And you know, I would argue your work is at least as good as it was back then, or even more amazing. What what drove the switch to Fuji for, okay, for your so, vibe? Okay, so so I can I can sum it up with a story and a very short and out you know thing. What happened was the the gear. I was I was a Canon shooter. Canon's great gear. Um, but I was also starting to travel more and the travel restrictions were getting terrible. And I like, you know, two cameras and, uh, so on and so forth. And it was getting, my pack was getting heavier and heavier, um, and harder to travel with and almost impossible. And my last trip, uh, almost didn't make it because the pack was too heavy. And then I started to fall down because I am known as a landscape photographer, a travel photographer, but in my landscape work, I'd be clambering to get to a location and the pack, you know, you get in some position and then the pack takes so you know, a little inertia sort of starts to start to take over and it was toppling me. And the day I made up my mind to change was the day you and I were walking down a hill and it was a nothing hill, except it had some, you know, that rolly gravel mm-hmm. and I slipped. It should have been no big deal. I slipped and fell on my ass, pardon my language, right at your feet. I looked up at you. I was horrified. I looked up at you and you're looking down at me with this look of pity, worry, <laughs> and trying not to laugh. And there, there, and was, day, there was a lot of I told you show in that because I'd been preaching uh, the virtues that, of mirrorless for years. That, up moment, 
that moment and that look of yours, that was when I, in my mind, that's when I changed. Yeah. yeah. I ended up with Fujifilm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you haven't looked back since, right? You're no. Right. Yeah. No, I had a trip coming up at that point and I took Fujifilm with me and it, it, it opened my eyes. You know, it's not all about gear, but gear can help you. If you have a big imagination like I do, gear can help you unlock it. And create with it if it's you know if it's the right thing for you. No, yeah, and that and that's a perfect segue into in chatting with you, Anton. So you are you work mm -hmm. over at Smug Mug. You're a film a filmmaker over there and and Correct. heading up the Smug Mug Films project. So you know, Karen Karen talks about gear and it, it doesn't matter, but sometimes it does, obviously. And looking at your work, especially with the film that you did with Karen. You are a master. I mean, you you you're not you don't see you don't strike me as the filmmaker or the photographer that that says, hey, I have a piece of gear. Let me let me play around with it. You were using the gear melted away, you know, so I'm yeah. watching it through photographer eyes and I'm transported to Slovenia. Right. Versus, oh, what a what a, a cool drone shot or what a cool shot of Karen doing this. You know, it was more of I'm there, which I'm assuming was your intent. Can you can you talk a little bit about your your methodology and or or even backing up a little bit? What is the goal of Smug Mug Films? And then how do you approach them, you know, being, yeah. you, know, you know, being lightweight and all that? Yeah, I mean, the goal of Smug Mug Films is simply to, it's a, such an amazing series. Uh, I mean, it's near and dear to me since I created it, obviously, but um, it's such a cool series in that we're really highlighting not just photographs, but the photographer itself, themselves. And, you know, that's what Smug Mug does. We really kind of highlight the photographer. And these series are mini documentaries where we get to really kind of climb inside a photographer's brain and find out what drives them, what their passions are. And it's not a commercial. We don't bring it back to the product or our services or anything like that. It's solely about the photographer. And um, it's our way of kind of celebrating that passion, our passion for the photographer. So yeah, and, then, and that's one thing I noticed in the film itself, there was there was no mention except for the, you know, the branding at the beginning and the ending. Yeah. There was no, you know, hey, go get a smug mug or Flickr account. Now it was, you know, it was all about Karen exclusively, you know, and it, yeah. it and, you know, it wasn't even that much about Fuji. I could see the Fuji camera obviously in there and people are going to look for that. So you didn't necessarily need to be explicit about that, but it was, you know, very clearly in a, a piece that was speaking to the, the artistic talent of the photographer themselves. Uh, so, but, but with that, what, how does, how does that translate back to smug mug? Like what's the value add back to, back to smug mug? Or is it just merely altruistic to the photography community? I mean, you know, we could say it's altruistic to the photography community and that was the driving force. But, you know, for smug mug, what we get out of it is that association that we are connected with these photographers and we do, we are connected to that community and with that we do understand we get it, you know, we're not out. It's not, um, an entity that's solely out for profit. It's just, that we are truly engaged with photographs, photography, the community. Um, and we love that. And we hope that this series somehow reflects that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it, it does. So, it, it, it's it's yeah. really impressive. And, uh, you know, as we, once this goes through post-processing, I'll have added in some shots, some select shots from the, from this, from the, uh, the, uh, the film. Karen, oh. when, when you're out there, let's, let's talk about the, the location itself. So Slovenia, what was what was behind the choice of Slovenia? Did you guys collaborate on that, or did Anton? Did you say, you know what, I really want to go shoot a film in Slovenia? Who's the perfect person? Karen Hutton. How did, how did all that come about? Do you want to tell that one, Anton? Sure. Um, Slovenia, you know, is a place that a lot of people couldn't pick out on a map, I guess. So when we said we went to Slovenia, a lot of people go, well, why did you pick that location? If we went to the Alps or Iceland, it might be more obvious, but. Um, you know, I'd been to Slovenia before. Um, I knew how beautiful it could be. We wanted to bring Karen out of her element, take her out of, say, California, for example, and get her traveling, take, put her in an environment that she wasn't familiar with. Um, and after doing some research, we figured that there was so much, and Karen actually says this in the film, there's so much beauty and these awe-inspiring uh, places in Slovenia that are in a small distance in a very concentrated area. And because we had, uh, we knew people on the ground there, uh, we figured it'd be a perfect place to shoot. Uh, it was the fall colors were going on at a particular time and we just went with it. And, um, you know, in retrospect, 
I couldn't be happier that we went to Slovenia. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's beautiful. And Go ahead, I, I want to just throw in there that, yeah, that um, because of the vision that I had, and he said to me, because I'm, I'm often known as a landscape and travel photographer, but that's not my whole story. And he wanted to tell that story, you know, the, the bigger one. And I said, well, then we have to go somewhere that has the variety of water, you know, coast, uh, what am I trying to say? Not ancient cities, but, you know, historic villages and so on mm -hmm. to the mountains, culture, yeah. culture, culture to places in between to places humans have been to places humans haven't been the beauty, the brushstroke of creation that I see this planet as and to tell the story that um, that I'm here to tell yeah. and the mission that I'm on. And I and he said, what genre should we focus on? And I said, well, my photography really isn't about a genre it's a philosophy. It's I'm on a mission. It's a it's a way of approaching life and of seeing life as such. This is the gamut that a f that film would have to cover. So then he started to go, all right, who do we know? Because we were talking about France, because I know f parts of France, but we needed feet on the ground and we didn't have that. Um, and then he started, you know, what he said about Slovenia. And we had an amazing guide. And I mean, it was jaw dropping and it really was an amazing experience for me. I've never done anything like it. Well, ever. you know, Karen, I want to, I want to talk about that too, just sort of the experience because if you, and the guide, because if, if you look at your, your work and you may not even know this, but if you look at your work and like take all the photos that you've taken chronologically and sort of peg an emotion level, with those photos over time, you can almost peg a sine wave, you know, in terms of, you know, how is Kieran feeling right now? You know, how is Kieran feeling on that day? Because your photos, you've mastered, it seems like you've mastered the talent of being able to convey the emotion, whether it's, you know, on purpose, subconscious or conscious, you, you, you convey that emotion through your work. Is that, is it conscious that you're doing that or does it just speak to you and it's like, okay, it's an itch you have to scratch? It's, well, it's both. I mean, you know, it's an itch you have to scratch and it's, you're conscious of it. So then the, the trick is to go deep enough into like, okay, I have this feeling in my gut. I have this feeling in my heart. I have, my breath is doing this thing. My mind is doing this thing. What does it mean? So there must be something here. Yeah. And then you have to stop and there's a whole process. You've got to go deep inside and find out, all right, what is the feeling and what exactly in this frame is it? And it's like a little Geiger counter. Yeah. And then it goes, and you're like, oh, and there it is. And of course there were a lot of, oh, there it is, is in Slovenia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's what yeah. people look for. You know, and you mentioned, you know, you guys, and both of you guys, feel free to jump in on this. So you mentioned that, you know, there, there's a lot of stuff in Slovenia in a very small location. And in the film, you talk about go, starting in the point and then working your way up in, into the Alps. Um, to do that, you know, for folks that are listening to this and watching this and they're like, you know, okay, I gotta go there. That's, that's fantastic, that's beautiful. You don't. You didn't just fly in there, you know, Anton. You said you'd been there before, but you guys just didn't fly in there. You had a guide that that took you around to the select places, and your guy's name was Pietre, right? So, yeah. so talk about that, Anton. If you could take that, talk about that process of engaging with the guide and working with the guide, so that Karen can get the shots that she's looking for, and Anton, you get the shots of Karen and of the location that you're looking for. Yeah. Um, well, initially, our, um, we had another guide in, in mind, in fact, uh, and she is uh, she works as a support hero at Smug Mug. Her name is Anna, and she broke her foot. Was it a week before we were going to? A week, yeah, a week or a less. A week prior. Or and she's a, an amazing photographer in her own right, and she's practically a guide to Slovenia herself. So she found another guide for us in her stead. Um, and uh, once we were, we started talking with Piotr, um, we discussed the project with him and what we'd like to do. Um, knowing that he's, a, I looked at his portfolio as a photographer and uh, we just kind of started pointing things out on the internet and his portfolio and we'd say, we'd like to shoot at a place like this and this and this, and like three distinct locations maybe, like a forest, uh, the mountains and the seaside. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, luckily, like I said, Slovenia is so small that you could drive the length of the country in a day. Wow. So, um, you know, he kind of 
took us on this route and we all kind of agreed, okay, we'd start at the, we start at the sea and work our way north. Um, and we had enough time where we had places picked out that we knew we wanted to capture like Lake Bled. And we had some off days where we kind of left it up to him and we said, Hey, is there anything, you know, with this downtime, is there a location that you might want to bring us to? And he had, he was full of locations. We could have spent three weeks there, I think with him. Um, and it just seemed like any location we went to, uh, was amazing and that we could make something of each location almost. And, uh, it was almost too much for a film, you know, it was just like, gosh, we have to like narrow uh, some of the stuff down. And I have tons of footage that I didn't use in the film. I could make a second film with the footage that we captured. And how, how long were you guys there? How six long was days, it? Uh, is eight, was it eight days or six well, days? I think it was six days. Yeah. I and mean, we were probably gone for eight, but I think yeah. we were in Slovenia for six. So yeah. And, you know, yeah, and we just had to account for we, we could have shot it in less, but um, we had to account for, for weather, I suppose, but we got great weather. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, but I mean, that, well, that, that aside, I do want to say one thing about yeah. Slovenia. It is none of the places that we went to were like these hidden gems that no one could ever find. I, I honestly, it's such an easy to country, country to communicate in, to drive in, to get around in. Food's honestly, amazing. if we had a few more days, I mean, honestly, and not to take anything away from our people on the ground, but we could have run into some of these places by accident almost. It's, so I would encourage people just to go there and photograph even on their own because it's, it, again, it is small and it is beautiful and you can't, I, honestly, you can't go wrong. And it's, it's inexpensive too. Yeah. Was, yeah. yeah. So, no. so, so, Karen, I want to, I want to, and Anton, prepare yourself because I'm going to ask you this exact same question. <laughs> <laughs> Throw me to the wolves first. Well, yeah, of course. Nice. Okay. Thanks. So here, here's your wolf. So the when you're preparing for a trip like this, and again, I'm I'm being my my listener advocate, you know, because they're like, okay, I want to go there, but I don't know where to start. When you're preparing for a trip like this, and you want to, you may not get back there again. And you want to make sure that you cover the spots. Yeah, of course, you can get a guide that will take you to the right spots. Um, but you're working in tandem with another creative person collaboratively on this project. Karen, how do you how do you figure out what shots you're going to get? Or, and do you plan it? Do you have like a list of the shots that you want to get from a particular location that you've Googled based on the conversation you guys have had? Or do you just say, hey, guide? Take us to a beautiful location and you figure it out on spot or, you know, you know how, how well, do you manage that? Working with Anton is like at first I thought I was going to have to help because usually when I'm involved in a project, if I'm not <laughs> if I'm not helping or inputting or whatever, it just doesn't happen. But Anton is a force of nature unto himself. <laughs> <laughs> and it became obvious early on that he had this under control. And then the next thing you have to realize is that with a creative project like that, you can't both lead. And this is his baby. So as long as he was, you know, as clearly as in control of things as he was, I was happy, excuse me, happy to say, well, whatever you need, you know, let me know. So I was really, I'm so lucky because I was able to just go, all right, I'll be led. And the next level of that was, I, cause I kept asking him, what do you need from me? Because my background on camera and uh, being part of projects and you name it, is you are a persona. You're performing, not yeah. in a fake way, but you're presenting a particular idea, talking to an audience in a certain way. And he kept saying over and over again, I don't want any of that. I just want you. And I'm like, uh, what is that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and because I know how to do that, I have just never been photographed doing it. Yeah, you know, because yeah, yeah, when yeah. I photograph, I go to this other place. And when I'm teaching, even I can do a little bit of it, but I can't completely go there because it's it really is another kind of another realm. And then so for days on end to just allow myself to be led and just show up and do he kept saying, just do you. And I'm like, are you kidding? That's so boring. I think about day three, I had a meltdown and I said, <laughs> this is boring. I don't know why you're making a film about me. I'm, I'm embarrassed. I, I don't think this is a good idea. What are we doing here? I don't mean to like have wasted your money. But and he looks at me like I've grown three heads and he's like, uh, because I wanted to do it with you, you know, here in Slovenia, not in a weird way, but wanted to make this film. And I, and I just, I just had to whew, keep letting go. And that was the hardest thing for me. And, yeah, but, yeah. I, but we went out, you know, through over enough days that I just went, okay, just show up and trust the trust, faith and 
you know, just be in awe and wonder all the time was what I eventually just did. Yeah. Well, you and I have had had offline conversations, Karen, about you. you know, and that's one of the things I, I, I love about you and other photographers that, that are like you. It's it's the those photographers that don't realize how awesome they are that tend to be the best photographers. And it's not that fake self-aggrandizing stuff. It's it's just like you literally don't know how great you are, <laughs> you know. And then when other people see it, it like Anton, I'm assuming you saw it, you're like, what are you talking about? You know, of course, yeah, he was, was kind of like that. And the thing you have to realize as the person questioning it, like if, if you're in that position of going, I'm not worthy, is if you continue to do that, you're not only selling yourself short, but you're also slamming the person who has chosen to work with you. Yeah. And by inference saying they don't know what they're doing either. Yeah. And that's just insulting. Yeah. Yeah. So at a certain point when I could just tell by the way he was looking at me, I was like, all right trust Anton, mm -hmm. trust the bigger vision, trust the whole thing, because clearly, you know, he made a choice you have to respect. I would imagine even, that even I would, if you don't get it. I would imagine that's what, you know, Hollywood directors go through every day, right? <laughs> Anton, it's like they have these <laughs> amazingly talented people on set who don't know what the bigger picture is, but you have to guide them into getting you getting the resources and the raw materials that you need in order to, to do the final cut. Anton, so the same question back to you. So you, how do you, how do you prepare for something like this? Is it, you know, is, as a filmmaker, do you say, okay, take, you know, hey, Pietro, take me to some, some cool places and then I'll figure it out later, you know, in post-production when I'm in, you know, in my editing, my NLE, or, yeah. or do you have a list and you have pretty much flow charted the whole thing out to get to where you no. want to go? No, in terms of what we're going to shoot, I'm, I go, I like to use the word organic because that's just a nice word for unplanned. Um, I, the biggest part of the, of the film for me is the story. So I pre-interview, like Karen, I pre-interviewed her um, and got the story in my head of, in terms of what she was going to say. In terms of what we were going to shoot, I just, you know, from pictures on the net, um, talking with Piotr, I knew that if we just, once we got to the locations that we needed, um, we would get, we would get everything we needed. And, um, and that part is built in the back end, in the editing room, you know, um, in terms of the visuals. So I never go with, um, uh, a shot list or, um, nothing storyboarded or anything like that. But I do know the photographer by the time I go and shoot with them and I know what drives them and their passions are. And that leads me, you know, during the shoot. Yeah. So. That's the thing, you know, creatively that I always learned in all the performing arts and regular arts I've ever been a part of, which is there's a, you know, the, the magic is in, well, the magic is throughout, but your job is to prepare, like to prepare to the nth degree and then let it go. Because you're pre if your preparation is good enough and the vision is strong enough, you can just show up, you know, mm -hmm. in a way, show mm -hmm. up, mm -hmm. be in the moment and allow the preparation and some of the creative, you know, the creative force that flows through you to bring what it is you need um, in lots of magical ways and to trust that process. And that's the hardest thing for people to get uh, that particular process. But Anton is a true artist and an absolute genius at that very process, because every day we let it go and it flowed and it would turned out, I think better than any of us dreamed it would. Yeah. I think a lot yeah. of that is the, is the, uh, uh a fear that people, you know, like me, ex-military, right, be prepared for every any and every eventuality, you know. Sure. Um, and and I think that translates into non-military. You know, when when someone's going to a location like Slovenia or any other location that they haven't been before and may not go back to again, then it it becomes a little bit scary, uh, you know, about okay, I want to make sure that I bring all the gear that I need. You know, what if there's a waterfall? Okay, I need some ND filters. <laughs> what if there's right. this i need to bring all okay you know there's a lot of what ifs that you want to allow no. for um anton how did you how, how, what's your loadout like looking at like, again like i said in the beginning looking at the shots and the the production quality of the final piece yeah. it looks like a group a team did it not just you know one guy yeah. <laughs> you know how did you manage yeah. that? um well you know over the years of my what I travel with is slowly just whittled down. It's just whittled, 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 whittled. And as technology changes and stuff gets smaller, it's so much nicer for me. Um, I tell the people that I work with often that when I show up the day I'm, I'm going to shoot, you're going to be totally underwhelmed because 
<laughs> it's just two mirrorless cameras and a small handheld gimbal. And now the drone went from, you know, this large to this large, Wow. you know, so, um, I, I travel with a small roller and one backpack and that's everything sound, you know, uh, stabilizing equipment, cameras, lenses, and drone. Yeah. So, um, but it's just two cameras going on constantly and a drone like sitting on the side waiting to fly. Should I decide to fly it? But you're just constantly going back and forth and you're shooting constantly to get every possible angle. Mm -hmm. Um, so that is the fear when I know I know I'm not going to go back to Slovenia, at least with Karen for this film. So, uh, although I do let it go, I guess to some extent, yeah. There, there, while the sun is up, I'm, I'm shooting like the whole time. So, That's great. Uh, and then, then yeah. how, do you, how are you, how are you handling, you know, backup and all that? Again, these are, these are files that you can't say, you know, you know what I'm that shot that I did of Karen on that bridge was blurry. I need to go get that again. You don't have that. So, mm -mm. or, you know, if a drive gets corrupted or you drop it on a, you know, wherever you can't, yeah. you can't reconstitute it. Yeah. Knock on wood. How do you, <laughs> how do you, how do you, how are you managing backup in the field? It's, I, don't, I mean, I just back up at the end of each night, you know, each night there's this ritual of, uh, you know, everything's battery operated now. So it's just charging 12 batteries or however many batteries and then, uh, downloading cards and backing up on three drives and, you know, and that's pretty much it. And that takes, you know, a good couple hours or, you know, that's just the nightly ritual. Um, yeah. so. Yeah, a lot of photographers. Yeah, yeah that's a, a ritual for a lot of photographers I talk to because it's it's if you're on an adventure like that, you back to the back to the hotel room, take yeah. care of all that stuff, and then go out to dinner and meet. You know? Exactly. Right. <laughs> that exactly. Like that's, exactly. That's the flow. So you know uh, and, that's amazing. You know, we were talking about that in the green room before we started the interview about how technology has allowed downsizing and doing a lot more and upping production quality with a lot less gear, right? Yeah. Karen, you're feeling it with, you know, Fuji cameras and mirrorless. Anton, you're feeling with small drones and mirrorless cameras and all that, being able to go anywhere and, and actually create the story. When you guys came back, Karen, we'll start with you. When you guys came back to the U.S., Mm -hmm. What was what was your deliverable to each other, Karen? Was it just you know okay, I'm going to post process all these amazing images and drop them on Dropbox, and here's a script that Anton gave me. I'm going to read it and then I'm done. Or was it more collaborative and you guys sitting in a room together, sort of wa walking through the process? Well, so it, both because we did. So this is how Anton does the the voiceover part, which is uh, you know this long interview we did. I think it was like 90 minutes, wasn't it? Something like yeah, that. Yeah. It was and out of that, out of that, see, this is, this is, oh, it just blows my mind how he pulled this thread that he put in the film out of <laughs> all that jibber jabber that we went through. And he wrote up a script and we made a little studio in a closet. You know, I, since I do voiceovers professionally, you know, and he's done a lot of this, we knew how to kind of pad this thing up to sound as, you know, not so echoey. And you have the, that voice anyway. You have that superpower. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, audio is the hardest thing to do in the field, I think. Yeah. Really good audio that isn't like bass loaded and echoey and blah, so you can't hear it. So, yeah, so I was able to do that and and then but we did it and we recorded it in this little space that we made. And then so he had that story and I had seen that, so I knew I knew what he was seeing. I knew in terms of the storyline and the thread. So then there were, I don't know, two or three places on location that he'd say, so talk about this, you know, and I knew when he said that, I knew where in his story that would fit. So then it became, all right, I don't know if we had recorded by then, but I knew kind of the, the tone it would be. So I had to sort of match the tone in the field with the tone recorded in the closet studio so that the whole thing could be edited together later uh, without a lot of fuss and muss and retakes. Yeah. And, and Anton, is that, is that your recollection of the process as well? Absolutely. You know, that's my process. I'll, I'll interview the photographer, Karen, for instance, on Skype or Google Hangouts or whatever um, a month before. And I'll take that 90 minute interview and I'll chop it up in a million pieces. And I basically write a script for them, but it's in their words. You know, it was in Karen's words. Mm -hmm. I just kind of cleaned it up and made it. I took it from 90 minutes to four minutes, you know, and then, um, yeah, we made a little sound studio in the closet of the Airbnb and like at Lake bled. 
and she whipped through it super quick. Um, you know, that's her background. So she was amazing at it. Um, and so, yeah, that part was for this particular film was so easy. And, you know, I love that. I that was that. really fun because it was totally collaborative because there was a few things he used my words, but I wouldn't have said it quite that way in that context. So he let me change it. There was a couple things that I thought maybe this would be a good bridge to right. that thought. And so we worked together to make it, you know, flow even more in the moment because you can plan all you want yeah. ahead of time. in the moment is when you make adjustments. Yeah. Sorry. I do. I do. I do want to say one thing regarding working with other photographers and Karen was no different in this aspect or, or in this particular case that I, I am making these films on my, own. I mean, I, I conceptualize it, I shoot it, I edit it, but every photographer and Karen, the same thing is basically a co-producer of the film. Like we're constantly working together in the field and in particular, this voiceover, um, we would go back and forth on what makes more sense. What's more her, uh, what makes her and the, and the film feel more like who she is. Um, and even when we're in the field too, you know, when we're shooting with the edge of a cliff, you know, do we want this? Do we want that? What should she shoot? And so we're always, the photographer is always like a co-producer, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, and it's great, and it makes my job that much easier, I suppose, or better. You know? And Anton, what, what were you? What were you uh, post process or doing your post processing? And was it Final Cut or Premiere? Premiere. Premiere. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. It, yeah. Looks, it looks beautiful, man. Congratulations, though. Uh, thank you. you. At this particular film, we we shot on Fuji, so it's the first time I've ever shot on a Fuji camera as well, and um, I was just super impressed with. So the all X, the imagery, all the imagery in that film is Fuji. So from the video, well, except for the except, drone shots, right? Except for the drones. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Wow. Fantastic. Beautiful shots. Karen, congratulations yeah. on those shots too. Your, your, the photography you. comes through loud and clear, you know, and I would encourage people to go check you out and we'll put the URL in the, in the blog post and in your lower third on this video um, and you. in the YouTube description. But uh, yeah, people should definitely check out the film. Check out your work, Anton. Is our what's next for you? Are there? I'm sure there's a long list of films that you want to do. What's coming up? Yeah, um, we have an amazing street photographer that I'm actually editing right now. His name is uh, Alan Schaller. From uh, he's from London, but we shot him in New York. And uh, I think next on the list, we're hoping to go to Russia and shoot at Lake Baikal, which is in uh, way out in Russia, um, just above Mongolia. It's this wow frozen lake and so yeah we'll, we're going to continue to make these um this i think karen's is maybe the 20th film in this series wow. um and so they just keep getting more interesting the travel the people karen was just a huge addition to the uh to the series so That's yeah fantastic well congr again congratulations to both of you and thank you both for agreeing to come on and do this at the you know right right ah, thanks for launch. having us yeah no so yeah it was really good it's good to have you guys on and good to share what's going on over there uh, you know it, there's there's a lot of love amongst the twip community for smug mug and Flickr and all that stuff so congratulations yeah. to everything you guys are doing i appreciate the altruism back to the to the photography community as well it's a you know it's a, it's a rare these days to see that <laughs> so yeah yeah, yeah. okay well, i appreciate it very much thanks yeah. for having us you're welcome such an honor to be involved in this project and thank you frederick for um letting us talk about it we really appreciate that you're welcome you're welcome karen what's next for you though i know you you've got workshops coming up you've got yeah you have know, a couple, all kinds I, of retreats everything what's happening yeah I do photography retreats or I lead photography retreats. My next one is coming up at a luxury horse ranch in Colorado, Vista Verde Ranch. Yeah. And then we do Venice and the Dolomites in June and Lake Tahoe in October. And then I have speaking engagements and, and uh, I, but I have a truck and trailer out and back. I'm going to do some road trips um, this summer in between travels because yeah. I'm I'm gonna take it take it to the road, baby. That's this. Year. How do you how do you deal with such a boring existence? I don't understand <laughs> how you're you know, able to, to deal with that. <laughs> I just have a rich imagination. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> Try to go. fill the gaps. All right. Well, thanks to both of you again. Uh, I appreciate your time today and and continued success and in, in on both of your tangents. Looks like you guys are both doing cool stuff. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for having us. Take mm -hmm. care, guys. All right. Take care. Bye. This is Twitter.